Armadilloids are remarkable armoured mammals. It is fairly common knowledge that in the past, close relatives of armadillos like glyptodonts got to massive sizes, reaching nearly two tons in some cases. But what is lesser known about these animals is that in the not so distant past, a large armadillo the size of a bear roamed South America, but with a twist. It was carnivorous. This is Macroeuphractus. Macroeuphractus comprises of three currently recognised species. Macroeuphractus alxi, being the type species, consists of a well preserved skull as well as numerous postcranial elements, as well as Macroeuphractus retusus and Macroeuphractus morini, are species known from more fragmentary remains. This genus has been grouped within the subfamily of armadillos known as Euphractinae due to similarities with the extant six banded armadillo, due to similarities in both the skull and the overall build of the animal. Macroeuphractus is notable for being the largest non pampathea or glyptodont armadillo discovered, but the most remarkable trait of these animals was that they were carnivorous. Extant armadillos are primarily omnivorous, which is also true for the closely related six banded armadillo, but Macroeuphractus showcases numerous specialisations for carnivory, something that is unique amongst all known Xenarthrans. Features that indicate a hypercarnivorous diet, where over 70% of matter consumed is derived from meat, includes large conical caniniform teeth, which indicates that they were used for grasping and holding onto prey, an enlarged temporal fossa for anchoring large muscles, as well as a deeper and more robust zygomatic arch, which is a key feature of many known carnivorous mammals. Due to the animal's size and build, they would have not been the most efficient pursuit predators, although extant armadillos can reach speeds of around 40 km an hour when fleeing from predators, so short bursts of speed may have been possible in these larger mammals. Like most armadillos, Macroeuphractus would have been fossorial, and using its powerful limbs would have been able to dig out and overpower the small and medium-sized caviomorph rodents as notoungulates that would have been plentiful. Scavenging is also a commonplace trait in extant armadillos, and would have also been present in Macroeuphractus. These armadillos existed through the late Miocene to the end of the Pliocene, occurring at a time when Sporacidonts, Forest Rachid and Sebacids were in a decline and the genus seems to have been among the various mammal groups that exploited this ecological vacancy prior to the Great American Interchange. Nonetheless, Macroeuphractus coexisted alongside the late surviving Sporacidont Thylacosmilus and Lower Wavis, likely competing amongst each other for the abundant prey items that existed in South America. Ultimately though, Macroeuphractus became extinct by the end of the Pliocene, but for what reasons would such a seemingly hardy animal go extinct? At the time Macroeuphractus disappears from the fossil record, South America had begun to become drier as the Ice Age progressed, which while likely not having a large impact on predators like Macroeuphractus, would have had a bigger impact on the prey. The changes in prey availability and competition for more efficient predators meant that Macroeuphractus would have had less to eat, and if it did manage to bring down prey, it would have the chance to lose it to other predators. Animals like Macroeuphractus are a prime example that animal groups familiar to us today can once have been far more diverse than we would have otherwise realised, giving us a unique insight into the evolutionary history and experimentation of past life, revealing animals that we could not have ever imagined, and that is precisely why paleontology is so key to our understanding of not just past life, but present fauna as well. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.